This demo video will start by giving a brief introduction to the MySQL cluster product. After that, we'll view a live demo of MySQL cluster in our labs. In the demo, we'll see node failures, cluster upgrades and reconfigurations, and all the while, there'll be a real application running, and you'll be able to see that that application is uninterrupted throughout all those operations. There are five key goals behind the design of MySQL cluster. The first of those is high write scalability. This is achieved by distributing the work across multiple servers in the system, while still delivering data integrity using ACID compliant transactions. The second is Five Nines availability, which is delivered using a shared nothing architecture, where data is synchronously replicated between data nodes. In addition, we have sub-second failover in the event that a node fails, and that node can automatically be restarted and rejoin the cluster. Real-time performance is delivered by data structures that have been optimized to run in memory. So this gives maximum throughput, but also very low and very predictable latency. Fourth is online linear scalability. As demand on the database grows, either capacity or performance, you can add additional servers and nodes with no loss of service. In addition, you can also make changes to the schema, upgrade the software, the hardware, apply patches, all without having any kind of loss of service to the application. Finally, there's low total cost of ownership. MySQL Cluster is open source software and it's also designed to run on commodity hardware. So for example, there's no need for expensive shared storage. In addition, we make it as easy as possible for applications to get hold of the data, supporting a number of different APIs, including SQL, C++, Java, JPA, LDAP and HTTP. MySQL Cluster has been deployed extensively across both telecoms and web workloads. These workloads are characterized by demands for high write scalability, real-time responsiveness and extreme availability. Cluster first proved itself in telecom subscriber databases embedded into HLR and HSS applications. These are truly mission-critical applications. If they go down, no one can place or receive calls on a cellular network. We have one customer who has embedded Cluster into their HLR HSS products used by telecom carriers around the world, collectively serving nearly half a billion subscribers per day. Cluster using telecom has grown into service delivery platforms and value-added services over converged IP networks enabling telecoms to offset declining voice revenues. Over the past 18 months, we've seen very rapid adoption of cluster for web workloads, as these start to demand the same levels of availability and performance as telecom applications. Typical workloads include managing user profiles, session management, e-commerce, and similar applications. Here we see the configuration that's going to be used for the demo. There are two applications running at the top of the screen. The first, noted by the red pen, is writing screen draw coordinates to the database. The second is reading and displaying those coordinates. These are represented by the red lines moving in the display window. By viewing the display window, you'll see that the database continues to both read and write data from the applications while it is upgraded, reconfigured, etc. The MySQL cluster data nodes, shown at the bottom of the screen, are where the data is physically stored and managed. The data nodes are also responsible for other core functions including replication, failover and recovery. The MySQL cluster application nodes in the middle provide the interface from the applications to the data nodes. In this example, we're using MySQL Server, which provides an SQL interface for the application. We could alternatively use the direct APIs to directly connect the application to the data nodes, bypassing SQL altogether. These include Java, C++, LDAP, and HTTP interfaces. The final nodes are for management. We show one here, but for best practice, you would deploy two nodes. The management nodes are responsible for configuration of the cluster and for handling network partitions, i.e. avoiding split brain. In this example, we show that the application keeps running even as one of the VAR data nodes fails unexpectedly. Because we synchronously replicate data between data nodes and all nodes are active on a shared nothing architecture, failover is sub-second and the application keeps running. When the failed data node recovers, it is able to rejoin and resynchronize with the cluster without any recovery needed at the application level and without the need for the administrator to do anything. This demo shows that when one of the MySQL servers stops, the cluster remains operational, reading and writing data. You'll see that the drawing application keeps on running. If the user connects via the JDPC driver to connect to J, then failover from the application is automatic. Otherwise, they would use something like a load balancer to fail over the application to other MySQL servers. Here we also show that MySQL Cluster is a multi-master database. So the application can write to any of the MySQL servers and updates are instantly available through all of the other MySQL servers. This gives high throughput when you have many concurrent operations on the database without needing to implement data sharding in the application. We can reconfigure the cluster without any application downtime. This demo specifically shows the effect when we change a configuration parameter applicable to all of the data nodes, in this case failure handling. 
The change is applied and each data node process is restarted in turn without affecting the application. In this case the change is applied and the nodes restarted automatically by MySQL Cluster Manager, the round console window at the foot of the screen. MySQL Cluster Manager is a commercial add-on to the MySQL Cluster, available to licensed users of Carrier Grade Edition. Note that you could also make this configuration change without MySQL Cluster Manager, it would just take longer and need more manual intervention. We can upgrade the cluster without any application downtime. This demo specifically shows that the new version is installed first to the management node and then to each of the data and application nodes in turn. A rolling restart is initiated to apply the upgrade, but the application remains operational. In this case, the upgrade is applied and the nodes restarted automatically by MySQL Cluster Manager. Again, you can perform the upgrade without using MySQL Cluster Manager, but there'll be a lot more typing and a lot more scope for error by the user. You can observe that the version changes from 7.1.4b to 7.15 as each node is restarted. We can scale MySQL Cluster online by adding new nodes with no application downtime. Great when handling rapidly growing user transaction or data volumes. The demo specifically shows that two new data nodes are added, but MySQL servers can also be added dynamically. The configuration files are updated on the management server, which then pushes them out to the existing data and application nodes, which run a rolling restart to recognize the new resource. The data node processes are then started on the new servers. Again, we have automated via MTM, but this can be done manually as well. To complete the online scaling, data is repartitioned automatically across the cluster, again with no downtime. Repartitioning is performed so that data from existing tables can be split amongst all data nodes in the cluster, freeing up space for new data on the existing nodes. After repartitioning, the new nodes are able to fully participate in the cluster, providing additional compute and storage resource. In this example, we show MySQL cluster application and data nodes being monitored by the MySQL Enterprise Monitor. This enables us to ensure that any issues that could affect application performance or availability are detected quickly before they become a problem. Here we are specifically monitoring data node memory use and MySQL server CPU utilization and connections. This is new functionality in MySQL Enterprise Monitor 2.3. Here two data nodes are down and MEM detects this, sending an alert to the administrator. The administrator can click into the detail and will receive recommended actions. We could configure this as an email alert or an SNMP trap for forwarding to a ticketing system. By following this link you can learn more about MySQL Cluster, including white papers, webinars, data sheets and case studies.